Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, November 19th, 2019. Uh, before I get into the action from yesterday, I do want to just make a couple of quick announcements. Number one, I've written about this recently in my blogs uh, over the weekend and then uh, yesterday in Trading Places. Um, we've got a big event coming up January 4th. Seems like a long time away from now, but uh, we are hosting our first online financial conference, Market Vision 2020. We announced this morning uh, the list of speakers that we are going to have. Uh, I think you're going to recognize a number of them. Excellent speakers. Um, all you have to do is go to our website, earningsbeats.com, earningsbeats.com. And at the top, you'll see 2020 Market Vision or Market Vision 2020. Just click on that, sign up, and all of the updates will be provided as we begin announcing them. The first announcement was the speaker list. Once you sign up, you'll, you'll get the uh, list of speakers. Also coming up this Friday, one of the speakers is going to host a little mini event. So we're going to have six of these mini events leading up to the uh, Market Vision 2020 event, the main event on Jan January 4th, 2020. Uh, but the first mini event will be held this Friday. And basically, it's open to whoever registers. So it's a free registration to get the newsletter. And then we'll send out room instructions uh, to those who are registered. So you want to make sure you sign up for that. Go to earningsbeats.com. And uh, at the top, make sure you check out or click on that Market Vision 2020 tab. That'll take you to the registration page. Or you can just go into one of my recent blog articles and there'll be a link in there you can follow. Uh, the other thing is tonight, uh, once a quarter, I announce my top 10 stocks for three different portfolios that I uh, keep track of at earningsbeats.com. The model portfolio has outperformed the S&P 500 by more than 30 percentage points. Uh, literally, today is the one-year anniversary of it. So it was started on November 19th, 2018. Today marks one year. And again, it's up more than 30 basis points, uh, 30 percentage points above the S&P 500. So if you want to check that out, you do need to be a member at Earnings Beats, but we do have a $7 trial. So anyhow, check that out. Just wanted to make those couple of announcements. Now for today, we've got a lot going on. So let's get into this. Uh, we're going to start with the daily market recap, uh, get into earnings spotlight, upgrades, downgrades. You kind of know the, the, the flow of the show. And then we're going to do a buy, hold, or sell. Uh, I'm going to go through as many stocks as I can in the Dow, the Dow 30. Uh, we'll see if I can get through them all if we have enough time. Uh, but I'll go through each one and give you my opinion, whether they're buy, hold, or sell. And then we'll wrap up the show with three you must see. Let's jump into the recap from yesterday. It started, as a lot of days have started recently, with some negative news out about the trade war, China. You know, there were some tweets. Uh, CNBC reporter in China said that the Chinese were pessimistic about the trade deal. The market doesn't care. Right now, the market says we're going to get a deal. At least that's the way we're trading. Dow Jones shook it off. S&P, you can see across the board, minimal losses, fractional losses. And we did see leadership, as you can see down here, real estate and consumer staples, leadership from defensive areas. So the market was a little bit more conservative yesterday. Money rotating into the, the uh, treasury. So you could see the yield dropping. That means treasury prices are going higher. So it wasn't a great day, but um, you know, we're just sideways consolidating at this point, uh, or at least yesterday. Really didn't do a whole lot, didn't really add on, although uh, each of these major indices did finish at all-time highs. The uh, small cap 600, you can see still struggling a little bit. I'm looking for a bounce off this 20-day moving average, and if we can get through 1,000, that's a big resistance area on the small cap 600. I believe if we go through that 1,000, it's going to be a very quick 10%. Uh, push to the upside on the, this particular index. I think small caps could catch fire. They started to show that back in October. And then here in November, they've just kind of gone down a little bit to test that 20 while we continue to see strength elsewhere. I think we're going to see it return. As I mentioned, 10-year Treasury yield. Uh, right now, it's down just a bit. We're at uh, one, just a little below 1.81%. Not a whole lot of change today. Uh, but overall, uh, I would say that the action recently has been pretty darn strong. A couple of uh, industry groups, you can see home construction bounced back nicely yesterday. I was a little surprised after on an uptrend, we printed that bearish engulfing candle, but home construction had a pretty good day. 
had an excellent economic report out this morning we'll talk about in a minute. And then you can see a pretty strong move here in the specialty retail group. This is a group that's been lagging a little bit on a relative basis. So it was nice to see it break out to a, about a three and a half month high on that index. So we may see some continuing strength in the specialty retailers. All right, 10 uh, year treasury yield. Let's get this updated, make sure we got the latest. Uh, currently 1.808, so 1.81%. Uh, does continue to uptrend here. I just wanna point out, this is a two year chart. If we go back up and break at another high, I wanna show you the significance of that. If we were to do it, we'll see. Uh, let's see here if we just kind of right there, drag this down just a bit. All right, so there is the roughly one year downtrend line coming in at about 1.95%. If we look at this prior low here, 1.95%, we look at this top recently right around that same level. So right here was the low close and there's the breakdown. We've been trying to get back through a move through 195 would be a very significant intermediate term breakout to me in that treasury yield. And that would mean, again, a very significant rotation away from treasuries. That would be bullish for U.S. equities, in my opinion. Watch for this. If we can continue to put in these higher lows and then we go up and break out through 1.95, 1.96, I think that could lead to a continuing big push to the upside. And I think we're going to get it. I've said before, I think the S&P 500 moves through 3,200 before the end of the year. Doesn't seem that far away now that we've had this big move. But a couple months ago, it seemed like it was uh, quite a bit away. But the pattern measures initially to that 3,225 area. All right. Uh, economic reports. I wanted to just mention this morning, we had the October housing uh, starts out. Came in just a little below expectations, 1,314,000 units. Market expecting 1,320,000 units. October building permits, however, 1,461,000 uh, units versus 1,378,000 units. That was the highest number of building permits in 12 years since back in 2007. So pretty interesting um, development there. Of course, building permits, there's only one reason why you go get a building permit, because you intend to build. So that's a pretty good economic sign. We talk about following technical analysis because it gives us uh, those clues before we get the news. We're now starting to get these great reports out of home construction. If we just go back and look at the last few years, you can see 2019 has been a huge year for home construction. Now we're getting the 12 year high on building permits. Want to always pay attention to what's going on on these charts. Uh, but home construction, I think, still looks good. I was Pointing out yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised if we pulled back a little bit, only because we have a lot of room down here to the 20 week. We don't have to pull back. I do think this overhead resistance level at around 1,000 from beginning of 2018 could pose uh, some short term issues. I think if we get up there and we haven't turned back up on this PPO, we could have a negative divergence. Just some things to keep in mind, watch for. XLP, consumer staples. Did make the breakout slightly yesterday. I see equal highs, rising lows, ascending triangle. That is a bullish breakout in my view. The XLE, bad day yesterday, but we do have gap support that it's testing and also this trend line coming up here. Let's watch to see if we get a reversal on energy. I know crude oil was down this morning. We may open lower, but just watch for a possible reversal. If we get a reversing candle here, we could be putting in another short-term bottom right on this trend line. So watch for that. Uh, let's go around the globe here for just a second. I'm going to just pull up the DAX and let's go with a, a weekly chart. And I want to just uh, show you a couple things quickly here. Uh, first, I'm going to pull up the correlation indicator. And I'm going to go back. Uh, let's go back 15 years here, weekly chart. And so looking at the DAX, you can see since that 2009 low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Higher low, higher high, higher low, and here we come back up looking to break out. I think we're going to make that breakout. Check out the correlation between the DAX and the S&P 500. Um, this is generally a very strong positive correlation. It's the one uh, index around the globe that I really pay attention to, Germany's, because that is the one that's most highly correlated, in my opinion, long term to the S&P 500. Uh, but let's take a look at a couple of others here. Hang Sang, a lot of unrest over there, 
I still think we've got a beautiful uptrend in play. I see a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And right now, as long as we hold this low, we've still got the higher low in place. But I think this double bottom right here could do it. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Hang Seng uh, rally pretty nicely. I'd be more concerned maybe if we lost uh, about 24.5 because there, I think if you connect these, uh, this trend line, you'd be around that level. Also, recent lows around that level as well. Um, also, correlation, pretty strong, not as strong as Germany, but a pretty strong correlation with the S&P. You know, there's so much talk about what goes on over in China. And to be honest, as a trader that looks mostly at U.S. stocks, I don't pay much attention to what, go, what did the news out of China, except obviously when it impacts the U.S. like the trade war. But look at the correlation here. Look how many times it goes into negative or inverse correlation with the uh, S&P 500 in the Shanghai. This to me suggests that if something bad's going on over in China, that doesn't necessarily mean that the U.S. market's going to go down. I'd be more concerned if something bad was happening over in, in Germany. If something bad is happening there, I think then you've got much more to worry about here in the U.S. based strictly on this long-term correlation indicator. All right, uh, let's move on. I want to go through some earnings reports with you, and I'm going to go through these fairly quickly, just a couple of them. Start off with ZTO Express. They reported last night. They did beat on their bottom line. The stock is down a couple of percent pre-market, but it has been trending higher here versus the uh, business support services industry group. I don't know. Volume looks pretty good. False breakout. It is down a little bit. I think maybe on a 50-day test, this one may reverse back higher. Uh, probably the big one of the morning, Home Depot missed on their top line, simply matched on their bottom line, 253 versus 253. And then they guided their fiscal year 20 comp slower. Stock is down 3.82% in pre-market. This is one I thought would have a pretty decent report. Um, unless we get a big reaction, though, I think maybe this double top could be a problem. Let's see whether or not we hold on a pullback around this 230 level. Again, we are down about almost 4% pre-market. So we'll probably be down close to that level, testing it uh, early this morning. Medtronic, MDT. Uh, you can see breaking out here, putting in a reversing candle yesterday on increasing volume. The stock, though, came in with a pretty good report. They beat top line, beat bottom line, a buck 31 versus buck 28. Stock guided, their company guided fiscal year 20 earnings per share higher, and the stock is up a little more than 1% in pre market action. It's already gone up quite a bit. It is a leader. Uh, this is one that certainly could come back down, test that 20 day, but I do like MDT going forward. Uh, one stock getting hit hard today is Kohl's, KSS. Uh, they came out, they did beat on their top line, but they missed on their bottom line, 74 cents versus 85, and they guided fiscal year 20 earnings per share lower. So I think you got to be really, really careful there. Um, right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, Kohl's is just not looking very good. And this is the one yesterday I talked about uh, over at Earnings Beats in the, in the webinar I was hosting there. But this uh, gap area really, you know, it looked like we were showing some relative strength, broke out to about a five or six month relative high on Kohl's versus the apparel retailers. But the problem was we were up here in this major gap resistance area where we had seen a lot of sellers. Now we come out with news not so good, stock down 13% pre-market, not looking good there. All right, let's move on. Upgrades and downgrades. Going to go in and take a look first at Broadcom. Broadcom upgraded today. Um, I actually like this chart. I see the volume coming in, picking up as we go up and we test overhead resistance. We haven't made the breakout yet, but a close above 320 would be very bullish after all of this sideways consolidation and basing. Um, relative strength has been bad, uh, but it is part of that really hot semiconductor group. So unless you're breaking out and you're setting new highs every day, you're probably going to be downtrending versus that group. Um, but I think this is an opportunity with this uh, upgrade, if we can get this breakout, to maybe begin to break this down relative downtrend. So it's in a good group. It's looking like a pretty good pattern to me, nice consolidation. So I, I'm okay with this upgrade. I agree with it. OKTA, OKTA. This one upgraded this morning as well. I'm starting to see more and more of these software stocks regaining their strength. You can see software broke out, but a lot of that is because Microsoft has been so strong and is heavily weighted. Uh, Okta, another one. I wrote about one yesterday in my daily market report to Earnings Beats members, um, Avalara. I think it's AVLR. 
um, making a similar type move. I can show you that chart real quick, but very similar downtrend. Looks like the downtrend's broken. Look at that move coming up. Volume's been good the last couple of days, and it closed yesterday at about a two-month high, almost two months. So we're starting to see more and more of this. So Okta, kind of the same thing, trying to break above this prior high, moving to a two, two-and-a-half-month high. Uh, also had struggled on a relative basis, but starting to turn back higher. This is uh, one that's been loved for a long time. So uh, if it starts to regain its relative strength, OKTA could be very solid. Uh, another upgrade, Vertex Pharmaceutical. One of my favorite stocks in the biotech space that I've talked about recently. Great volume trends. Look at the relative strength breaking to new highs, and the group is starting to gain strength. Relative to the S&P, it's up past, uh, or it's at about a four, four and a quarter month high. So the group looks good. And this is one of the leaders, a lot of volume coming in. I agree with this upgrade. Downgrades, AT&T was downgraded to a sell and it, given a price target of 30. Stock has been performing pretty well. It pretty much is the index here. So uh, this uh, relative strength doesn't really work. But looking at the S&P, it has been a pretty good performer relative to the S&P. Good volume trends. Stock being you know, dropped to a sell. I don't know that I agree with that. I think uh, could be a, uh, an opportunity here on uh, AT&T, especially as, if it holds that 50-day. It's been holding that 50-day for the last few months. Another sell today was on MSGN. And I mentioned these sells because Wall Street generally doesn't give sell ratings. Normally, it's underweight, uh, something like that. But rarely uh, do, they, do you see uh, just flat-out sell. But MSGN was uh, also given a sell and a target of $15. Stock is currently trading at 1849, or at least that's where we closed yesterday. This one I'm a little more concerned about because of the long-term relative weakness uh, versus the recreational services area. The group itself has been going down. It's a bad area of the market. It's been a bad stock. Volume trends much different than what we saw on AT&T. Um, I don't know about a sell, but yeah, this is one that I would, I would be interested in, that's for sure. Uh, initiated, I do want to just mention one other stock that did get initiated today, and that is uh, LHX. This is L3 Harris Technologies. Been downtrending, but overall had been a very strong performer till late. You can see it's trying to hold this relative strength versus its defense peers. So this comes in at a pretty nice time. It, it was actually initiated as an overweight. So if we could get a move back up through 205, get through the 50 day, that would certainly be helpful here for LHX. All right, that is your upgrades and downgrades and uh, initiations here. Um, we'll be back in one minute right after this message. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We are going to jump into uh, buy, hold, sell. And what I wanted to do here was take a look at the Dow components. I'll try to go through as many as I can. Maybe I can get through all of them before we finish the show with three you must see. But let's go ahead and jump in here. So first up on the Dow, Apple. Apple's been a strong buy, in my opinion. Now, it is overbought. So for somebody looking to jump in now, usually jumping into a stock that's been overbought for weeks is Usually not the best strategy. I think the stock goes higher in time. I, I do think it's a buy, but I would be waiting maybe on a pullback. But it's still, I think it's a buy based on its chart. AXP. This one, uh, I'm going to say is a buy. You know, if I pull, up, pull it up on a relative chart, you can see on a relative basis, it just hasn't been a very good performer. So that's why I hesitate. But we did break out recently above all of this resistance around 120. And now we're pulling back and testing that 20-day moving average. I'm going to give AXP a buy, but I'm going to have a tight stop. It is an underperformer, so if it can't hold its 20-day moving average, I would probably move on to the uh, move to the sidelines. Next up, Boeing. Long-term chart, 385, 390, big resistance area. Um, stock has certainly regained a lot of strength here in the past month, and the volume has been pretty good on that move. 
I think maybe a, the worst is behind the stock, but I want to see that breakout technically. So I think for me, Boeing would just be a hold at this point. Caterpillar, Caterpillar, definitely a buy. I think uh, this is, we've seen a lot of rotation in the market. Look at the volume coming in the second half of October as we broke out above the summertime highs. I think Caterpillar looks good. Pull back to the 20 day moving average would be an interesting entry. Next up, Cisco Systems. I'm going to go with a sell. Uh, just don't like the way the stock is trading. It had a move down on pretty good volume, sideways consolidated. You got a little bit of a bear flag. And we just broke down below that with earnings, below that bear flag. So this one's got work to do. I consider it a sell, not interested. Chevron, uh, the energy stocks are a little interesting. I mean, I, I think the dollar could weaken in the next quarter. And if it does, that would provide some tailwinds for energy stocks. Still though, we haven't made the breakout. Um, this is, uh, I think, better than Exxon, which we'll look at in just well, if we can get to it. Um, but still on a relative basis, it's been strong. It's just been in a weak group. That's been the biggest problem here. What you want to see is a breakout above 124 and a half to the downside. Got pretty good support down around this 110, 112 area. I'm okay with, uh, I, I guess probably at this point, I would just rate CVX a hold. But if the dollar weakens and we get a breakout, just remember you got a leader here with CVX. Walt Disney, love it. Uh, to me, this is a buy. Love the breakout here recently, taking out the prior highs. Uh, I think that's a, a big deal. It, it had a huge move up back in April, really sideways consolidated for a while. This downtrend was broken. I think we're trending higher. I think Disney's a buy. Next up is uh, Dow DuPont, sideways consolidating. This one, uh, even though it did have a pretty good uh, finish to October and early November, hasn't really continued. So I'm going to rate this one just a hold. It's just sideways consolidating. Goldman Sachs, I think this one could be a big winner in the next few months, but I want this breakout. I want to see this breakout first. It's been performing well. I just like the space. Uh, investment services has recently broken out. I think this could be a good group for the next few months, especially if that 10-year treasury yield starts to move back up again. So I'm going to give Goldman Sachs a buy. Home Depot, we have new news with the earnings. I have to see the, the stock, how it trades today. I'm going to say hold for now. It's been in a nice uptrend, been a leader. But with that earnings and the move down, I want to see how it responds to that gap down this morning. IBM at best a hold. Sideways consolidating, market going higher. IBM on its earnings had the big gap down. I don't see a breakdown, but certainly I just see more of consolidation than anything. You probably could draw trend line here coming up, trend line there going down, squeezing. Let's see which way it breaks. It's a hold. Intel, love Intel. Huge breakout, nice group. Semiconductors are strong. I love that candle. I think uh, you don't see hardly any filled candles in here, meaning that sellers just can't get any control whatsoever. I think Intel's going higher. It's a buy to me. Johnston & Johnston, JNJ, I think it's a hold. It's been downtrending, tried to rally, went back down with earnings, coming back up. It just needs to break out and show some relative strength. I'm going to call it a hold. JP Morgan, to me, is a buy. One of the best banks out there on a relative basis. You can see here, stock is one of the best performing banks. It's one of the big names. It's got great volume trends. It's trending higher. It's a buy. Coca-Cola. Uh, I'm glad so far to see this gap support holding. So here was your gap up. We came back down. We set a high. Coming back down, we haven't taken out this low. So I believe we're sideways consolidating in a longer term uptrend. This one I'm actually going to give a tepid buy to. I think this is one that could rally from here. Watch this move down or any move down below about 50 and three quarters. That would bother me. McDonald's, McDonald's, the whole restaurant group has just been up in flames, no pun intended. But the last few months have not been good here for McDonald's and the restaurant stocks. We're bouncing back up, but so far not able to get through the 20 day. I don't know that I would rate it a sell, but it's no more than a hold for me at this point. Uh, 3M, trying to rally back, uh, helping or being aided a little bit, I think, by the rotation that we've seen recently, but still got work to do. As long as it holds its 20 day moving average, I'll give it a tepid buy, uh, but it's got some work to do still from a more intermediate term perspective. Merck. Merck is actually one of the better stocks in the space uh, relative to the pharmas. They pay a nice dividend. I think they're consolidating. I expect this to break out. I would be okay with a buy here as long as the stock holds these recent lows. I'm going to say 79 to 81 needs to hold. Microsoft, love it. Broken out recently, just talked about it. 
sideways consolidation for a while. I think this one goes higher. I like Microsoft. Nike, uh, I was in this one for a while. I actually got stopped out on that move right there. That taking out that prior low below the 50, 20 coming down. And it was just one of those timing things. You can see the stocks come back up. I think with this rally back to the upside, I think now we've got an uptrend. Looks like a cup to me forming. So I'm looking forward to go 97, consolidate and break out. I think it's a buy. Pfizer, uh, unlike Merck, you can see on a relative chart, not so much. Been uh, trending lower. I'm just going to give it a, a hold at this point. Procter & Gamble, uptrending, higher highs, higher lows. I'm okay with this one on a buy. Travelers is a sell to me. Relative strength, you can see moving down, then gap down with earnings coming up to the 20-day. I think this one's got a lot of work to do. It's a sell. United Health, healthcare providers really beginning to strengthen. Nice breakout here. Good volume. United Health's a buy. UTX, great performer. This one looks super. Looking at the relative strength here, you can see it just broke within the last month, the 52-week relative high versus the aerospace group. I think this is a very, very strong stock. I like it. Visa sideways consolidating. I'm just going to say hold Verizon. Negative divergence has come back down and actually worked out that negative divergence. I'm okay with a buy here as long as this low right here holds. So be careful. It moves below 58. Walgreens Boots Alliance, great volume, breaking out, trending higher. It's a buy. Walmart, I'm going to stick with the buy. I actually like this reversing candle after gapping up 125 with earnings. Still got an uptrend in play. I'm, I'm going to rate that one a buy. Exxon Mobil. Uh, if we look at this one on a relative chart, uh, sideways consolidation versus its peers, not as good as Chevron, downtrending. I'm just going to say hold for now. And that is it. I got through them all, all 30 of them, buy, hold, sell. Now let's move into the three you must see. And I'm going to start with one of those stocks I just looked at, Walmart. Uh, so the number three stock on my list is Walmart. And the reason, that reversing candle right there. I like that. That's a piercing candle. We gapped up with earnings. They did actually come in a little bit short. Uh, it was a mixed report, but they gapped up, pulled back. I wouldn't trade it personally because it didn't beat on both top and bottom line. But if I'm just looking at it technically, I like that reversal off the 50-day moving average, which has been holding for the last few months. So I think WMT looks interesting off that reversing candle. Next up, NVIDIA. Talked about this one over at Earnings Beach yesterday as well. Didn't like it versus Applied Materials yesterday because the reaction was down. Applied Materials had a great move to the upside, but NVIDIA came roaring back yesterday, nice volume, and broke out, held its 20-day moving average. It's part of that uh, semiconductor group, which has been so strong, and NVIDIA, NVIDIA has actually been showing nice relative strength. So the fact that it's come out with its earnings and broken now to new highs, I think that is a bullish signal for NVIDIA. So I expect higher prices here. And then the last one that I have is uh, Netflix. Netflix uh, is up a couple bucks in pre-market, or at least it was before the show. I think it needs to get through this 310 level. If we can get through 310, then we need to work on the relative strength. Uh, so I like Internet Group. I think Netflix, uh, after reacting positively, positively on its earnings, which I didn't really care for its earnings, to be honest, stock did come back down after that, and it has been a relative laggard. But just watch because price action is everything. If we start making a breakout and you see that relative strength line building uh, and moving higher, you want to certainly be involved in Netflix. So watch for that. All right. Uh, again, uh, Market Vision 2020 coming on January 4th. Go to earningsbeats.com and uh, make sure you sign up for that so you get all the news updates and also an invitation to Friday's mini series, first educational event coming up. So uh, pretty excited to, for that. Tonight, I'm doing a webinar. You can check that out. You need to be a $7 trial member at Earnings Beats, but I will be releasing my top 10 picks for each of my portfolios. All right. I uh, want to thank everybody for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you tune in again on Thursday for the next episode of Trading Places Live right here on Stock Charts TV. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Thank you.